Hello everyone, welcome back to Card Collects, I'm Nathan, and today I am going to be going through pretty much everything that I have been buying different platforms, whether it's on eBay or ComC, COMC, on NBA Top Shot or Star Stock, just going through kind of my uh, mentality, my ideas behind why I buy things, and um, it's kind of to present this as I'm not necessarily saying buy all of the stuff that I'm buying. Um, part of it is just to present it as I'm going to show you a lot of stuff that I'm like, I bought that for fun or I bought that because I, I like that. Um, or I sold that for this reason or whatever, but, um, it just kind of gives me an opportunity to kind of explain a little more about my thought process and what goes into some of the things that, that I buy and stuff that, that I can't necessarily make a video about or that I haven't had time to. So um, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, the new Card Collects Community Discord is up and running. It is only available through a link in the chat in the live streams for right now. Um, I'm not making it publicly available right now for uh, just because um, I don't want to get overwhelmed and I don't want just anybody coming in and into the discord and um, causing trouble or anything like that. So I will put that link in the chat. Hello, Sir Charles. How are you doing today? <laughs> I don't know about all that, man, but um, I'm glad to have you here. Thanks for being here. It's been a busy week. That's facts. What up? What's up? How are you doing? Um, yeah, Card Collects Community Discord. The last time I did a live stream, I um, had some members in here, and they joined up, and it's been pretty fun. We've been uh, showing off some stuff. There's some cards that Connor bought. And just going back and forth. So I think it's going to be pretty fun. I think it's going to be a pretty good community. I know there's a lot of good people in, uh, in this community. And I really appreciate it. So let me get a link here. All right. And I'll drop that in chat. And then I'll pin it to the top of the chat. And... If you haven't had an opportunity, then feel free to use that to join the Discord. And um, I also set up, if we get any new subscribers uh, or anything in this, I set up some new alerts um, for the stream, which are kind of cool, or I think are kind of cool. So if we get any new subscribers or like any activity on the in the during the stream um you'll get to see those but yeah um so we can get started i was just getting logged in and everything so i'm going to be going into nba top shot again i did make a video about top shot but i really haven't talked about it a whole lot um but i'll go into i actually have to enter a code to get into this, I have my, uh, actually I need to probably make it so y'all can't see the code that I'm in here. I don't know why there's no way that somebody could be trying to access this, but you never know, I guess. Better safe than sorry. Uh, KY drummer guy just got one. Good to have you here. Jason Sauer, good evening, sir. I've got a Mike Trout to show you that I don't know if you're aware of, but it's kind of a pricey one um, that, I, that I stumbled across today, and, and I'll be showing you all some of that stuff. Getting paid from Top Shot is like pulling teeth four months. Yeah, I know. I know. It didn't take me quite four months. It took a good two months probably, though at least two months to actually get paid. Like you have to apply uh, for withdrawals and then you have to 
request a withdrawal. And then, yeah, it's weird. Top Shot is weird. Like, um, I, there's some things like, I just think Top Shot's weird. Like, it doesn't, I, I don't, I honestly, like, and this is not saying I don't like Top Shot or, like, I think it's bad or anything. I'm not hating on Top Shot, but I just don't see it lasting like they're they are compensating these players a lot to <laughs> promote this product like you got uh scary terry rozier um saying if anybody buys his number one top shot uh that he's they're gonna get tickets to the hornets game and and he's gonna meet with them and like crazy stuff which is great you know but how much is he being compensated for that you know and I can I understand it like they're it's not costing them anything to just release. I mean it is they have a lot of infrastructure and stuff, but it's not costing them anything necessarily just to the packs the digital property. You know they have to pay people to create it, they have to pay people to maintain it, they have to pay people to do all kinds of stuff, servers and all that th that jazz. But the actual top shots themselves, you know, there's no raw material that goes into them. So I don't know. I don't expect it to be something. I I honestly don't think it'll be around for a long time. Like even I don't know. I just don't think five years from now. I don't think it'll be around. They just do so much weird stuff to try to create hype around it. Sir Charles, my buddy just hit a Lamelo Ball teal explosion in a fat pack. Ooh, that is sweet. Oh my gosh, his base cards and hoops are going crazy. I bet those teal explosions are nuts. I say that. That was before the injury. I don't know what's happened since he got injured. Um, he won't get rookie of the year, most likely. I wouldn't think he would. Um, yeah, I always miss packs too, fifth beetle. So I'll tell you all about my top shot experience. Um, Elpa did... El Pepe de Pepe's. Hello. How important are error cards? It just depends on the card and it depends on the error. Like there's no given rule for, for error cards. Some of them are, aren't worth anything and some of them are worth a lot. It just depends on, on what they are. It doesn't, like the, the amount of error isn't that big a deal. It depends on what the player is and like, were all the cards produced that way or was it just a select number of cards that were produced with the error and then they fixed it? Like that has a lot to do with it. Like if they fixed it and there's only like a hundred cards, like the Frank Thomas 1990 tops uh, rookie card with the no name where his name is not printed on the front, there are very, very few of those and they are very, very expensive. Um, Billy Ripken, yeah, Billy Ripken's is a good example in that there are a lot of different variations of Billy Ripkins, but the one with the actual words spelled out where you can read it, um, you know, they, they, you know, they're worth some money and Billy Ripkin is not worth any money and neither is any other player from that set, basically. Um, you know, I, I mean, there are some rookie cards, but you know, that's just, that's a junk wax era set. But that card, even though it's Billy Ripken, nobody knows who in the hell Billy Ripken is. I mean, some people do, but you know what I mean. He's not not like a. It's not the first guy you think of when you think nineteen late eighties, early nineties baseball. Uh, El Pepe de Pepe's, you just subscribed to the channel. Well, it didn't do my stream alerts. Dang. It was supposed to. Oh well. That's cool subscribers maybe i can test it on here yeah i think i can here i'll show you all whenever we get a subscriber hold on i can't see it should wait dang it well, I can't test it. I can only test donations. I can't test the subscribers without going to the website. I'm not going to all that trouble right now. 
but uh, it'll get working sometime. So you got a Mookie and a Cody Bellinger card from Topps 2021 Heritage. On the back of the Mookie's card, it says Cody Bellinger and his stats. And on the back of Mookie's, it says World Series. I don't know anything about that. Um, you'd have to... Um, I know that Topps does build in some error types cards, especially in Heritage. So that might be something like an insert or a parallel that's like built into the set. I would recommend going to a site called Baseball Cardpedia. Baseball Cardpedia, like Encyclopedia, but it's called Baseball Cardpedia. And look up uh, 2021 Heritage and see what it says about them. Yeah, Cal's brother. But that that's where I always get... They have, like, all the information. If they have that set already, um, that's... On baseball cards, they don't have, like, a basketball card PD or a football card PD, but if it's baseball cards, they have pretty much anything you can want to know about a specific set or anything like that. So, get back into this whole top shot rigmarole. Um, so when I made that video, I put $20 in Top Shot, all right? I purchased two packs. This was two months ago. I don't know if y'all, y'all might not be able to see this. Hold on. Um, okay, so two months ago, I purchased... Two Series 2 Release 4 base set packs for $9 a piece, a Keldon Johnson dunk for a dollar, and a Brandon Clark dunk, or Brandon Clark layup for a dollar. Now, if anybody wants to guess how much I sold those for, I this is the time to guess. Because about a month later, I woke up to somebody in my comments of that video that was like, Hey, that one card you got is selling for this much. And I was like, nah. -uh. And I went, oh, and there's one other card. There was this thing called The Gift. And it was just a moment that they gave to you for, like, being a member prior to a certain point in time. So I'd signed up before they started giving away these gift cards. And I got that one. And mine was a Rui Hachimura. So... Let's go through here. About a month later, I sold a Kawhi Leonard. This is all out of those packs. Kawhi Leonard layup for $580. A Rui Hachimura, this is the gift, for $550. A John Collins for $53. A Miles Bridges for $58. An Ivaka Zubak for $30. These are all Series 2. That Keldon Johnson that I bought for a dollar, I sold for $95. A TJ McConnell for $78. A Jeremy Grant dunk for $78. The Brandon Clark layup that I bought for a dollar, I sold for $150 because it was number 385. And they go off like lowest, the lower serial numbers are worth more. I don't know who decided that, but in Top Shot, that's the way it works. To them... Lower serial numbers are worth more money. That doesn't work that way any in any other collectible that I know of. But in Top Shot, that's the way it works. So then I cashed out. I had like $1,600. So I turned $20 into $1,600 in a month. And I, I basically didn't even pay any attention to it. Um, so I did end up, I cashed out five bucks. <laughs> I cashed out thirteen hundred. I still had like about three hundred dollars left, and I was tried to get in on some pack drops. Purchased some cards just to have some because some of these pack drops now you have to have a certain amount of moments in your collection to be able to enter into the pack drop. So I bought some for really big money, like $20 a piece, just because I was trying to get enough to get in these pack drops. But at this point, this is really like free money. Like I'm, I made $1,300 already in the bank 
off of 20 bucks, which is stupid. Like, that's dumb. <laughs> but I'll take it, you know. I'll take whatever I can get. Um, so I bought some to try to get in some pack drops. Sold some. I bought some Colin Sexton for $12. And then, like, I kept seeing DeAndre Hunter showing up um, as, like, one of the lowest priced ones. And this is not, this. it's this l dunk of his. This is not his first card. He has a Series 1 card, I think. Um, but this is a Series 2 card. And I just thought that was dumb. Like, yes, he's been hurt. He's been out. He hasn't been playing for like 30 games, 27 games. But he played two games last week, and he was out Friday with a knee, sore knee. He should be back. Like, he should be back soon on a regular basis. And the Hawks are like fourth in the East. Like, they're up there. They're pretty solid into the playoffs. Um... So I just started buying DeAndre Hunter stuff. So, let's see. That one I just bought to get in a pack drop. This one for $14. It was, like, these are out of $35,000. I'm not going to explain a whole lot of this because I, I honestly don't understand a whole lot of it. But these are out of $35,000. The lower the seal number, the more they're worth. So I bought this one for $14. It's number 19000 something. This one for $15. It's number 11700 Here's another one for fifteen dollars, number twelve thousand two eighteen. Oh, by the way, the cheapest card on Top Shot for the last couple weeks has been like nine, ten bucks. Like that's the cheapest card you can get. Um, here's one, number ten thousand for fourteen dollars. Okay, then I started. I, I I start. I decided I was going all in on DeAndre Hunter on Top Shot, so I bought number one thousand for twenty five dollars. Number eighty five hundred for fifteen dollars. Number forty nine ninety one for nineteen dollars. Number three hundred and seventy four for forty three dollars. Number thirteen sixteen for twenty six dollars. Um, and then I sold a couple uh, Mike Conley and a Jared Allen for twelve bucks. I actually I lost money on those, but it doesn't matter. Like the whole thing is just like this is my mentality towards Top Shot. Like I have this free money. Hey Joe Cope. How you doing? Glad you're here. Um, yeah, I had this free money. I turned twenty dollars into sixteen hundred dollars. Cashed in thirteen hundred. I've got this free money, and I keep seeing DeAndre Hunter is like one of the cheapest ones on here. So I just went, took all that money, went all in on DeAndre Hunter. So I'm just gonna let it sit there, like I did with the other. Like I, I honestly, like I don't have. I find Top Shot interesting. I found it really interesting at first, but I have absolutely no att attachment to the moments, to the actual moments. Um, like they just don't drive anything in me. Um, as far as, as far as, like I, I get no feeling of like ownership or or like pride of ownership from having these Top Shot moments. And I, and I really, I don't get into the whole marketplace that much. So just like before, like I, I bought these up with my free money or whatever. And um, I just let them sit there. I do have some listed for sale at like really high prices. And that's kind of like my alarm bell. Like if I'm able to sell some of these at the prices I have them at, then I know that like things are going up. That's kind of the... That's kind of how I'm going to know um, whether to get in here and actually pay attention to what's going on is if, if some of these sell. Um, but anyways, that's my top shot. That's what I've been doing with NBA Top Shot. Uh, not a whole lot. <clears throat> Let's see. I've seen... Okay, so I've been looking at these actual Slam magazines... So NBA Hoops has the Slam Magazine cards now, um, but I've been looking at the actual magazines. So like here's the Kobe Bryant Slam NBA Hoops Slam Magazine card. They're really cool, <clears throat> but um, like they were produced in really big numbers as far as the base ones. There are numbered versions and there are 
hollows and all kinds of different stuff. They're really cool, but the base ones were definitely, they were like, if you bought a fat pack, you were pretty much guaranteed to get one. Um, yeah, so, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them out there. Um, but I've been looking at the actual magazines. I had my hands on an Allen Iverson one, and I'm, I like, I had a bid in on it, and something was going on. I took a nap or something, and I woke up and, and I had been outbid. It went for really cheap. But it's basically this magazine. and But it's the actual like print magazine. And I wanted it so I could uh, frame it and hang it up. I think it's just a really awesome... Like... Uh, just awesome design. Slam Magazine's pretty... Uh, icon it's just iconic. That's a cool one too. But I mean, you know, even the Kobe's, you know, they're pretty cheap, you know. Here's Kobe, Slam Magazine, original vintage 2009, How You Like Me Now, $49.99 or best offer. So, I mean, compared to what everything else costs out there, like, that seems cheap to me. Like, I don't know, the, I don't know what the resale will ever be for magazines, but to have something you can frame and hang up on your wall, like I think that's that's pretty cheap. I don't know. It's just that's just my thing and my whole whole thing. I would like to have, um, I would like to have that Allen Iverson one if I can get my hands on it. Now, as far as what I have been buying, see my watch list here. So, <clears throat> Upper Deck Brett Favre Rookies, there's two out of 1991 Upper Deck, and the PSA 10s are like 100, 120 bucks of each one. There's this one, let me zoom in, there's this one, and then there is this one where he's sitting on the bench with the headphones on, and both of them are around between 100 and 150 dollars in a PSA 10. And I always thought, well, it's just a junk wax card. Like, there's got to be a bunch of them. There's not, though. That's the thing. There's really not. Um, so if I go over to PSA. So this all stems from the idea that I think, even though football saw a lot of action last year's um, football market did, I don't think it really has matured to the point of where it, where it will be through the end of next season. So let's look that up. I can't remember exactly. I mean, it's not super low, but they're pretty low. So. Yeah, number 13, Brett Favre, 1,610 s and 2,300 9s. Um, number 647, 1,610 s and 811 9s. I bought two 9s of number 13 of this card, um, the one with a bunch of 9s. I bought two um, for 80 bucks. 40 bucks a piece because my brother, oh crap, he might be watching. I can't say. <laughs> because my brother-in-law is a big uh, Brett Favre fan. So hopefully he's not watching this right now because he might put two and two together. So anyways, um, that Jordan one sweet, yeah, they're, they're really cool. Like Slam Magazine's an iconic, like they have just... They're dope. Like, I don't know how else to put it. Like, it's cool. But yeah, I think those Brett Favre's for... I think Brett Favre is the only player in sports history to ever get the MVP three years in a row. I think so. I think that's true. He's Brett Favre. <laughs> um... 
does have a Super Bowl victory. Like, I just think it's just drastically overlooked um, because everybody looks at it and thinks the same thing I do. Like, oh, it's junk wax era. Like, you know, it's probably not worth anything. But um, I, I have to imagine that at some point people are going to go back and go, like, want to pick up Brett Favre cards. Like, how do you not? Like, you're going to pick up Peyton Manning, Topps Chrome, you know, refractors for like 50 grand or however much they're going for now. Um, but you don't want Brett Favre um, PSA 10. Like, I, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, it's always, you know, there's stages in development of any market. But anyways, I have been looking at a lot of Griffey Topps Chrome refractors. Um, here's a Tracy McGrady PSA 9 refractor. I love refractors. I don't know. Like, I just, I'm on the refractor, the Topps Chrome refractor train. Boop, boop. Here's Colin Sexton. These are just watched items. Um, Colin Sexton, Optic Choice. I'm just kind of seeing a lot of this watch list stuff is just seeing what the some of this stuff goes for. Here's a Barry Bonds Chrome Lord, Lords of the Diamond. There's this really weird thing going on with Barry Bonds Tops Chrome or regular refractors. Like some of them go for way more than King Griffey Jr. But like this one goes for way less. Like this one in a PSA 9, you can get for... I don't know, a hundred bucks. And the Griffey's like two, three times that for a PSA 9. It's a really cool card. It's die cut, it's chrome, tops chrome, and it's a refractor. Here's an Arenado refractor PSA 9. That one's got three days left on it. And then some modern basketball, Bam at a bio, rookie patch auto. Uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker, rookie patch auto. But anyway, just a mishmash of all kinds of different stuff. Um, if we go to purchase history, yeah, bought these Brett Favre's, a lot of two, 80 bucks total. Bought a 2010 Griffey Topps Chrome Refractor for $23. Bought a 2010 Orange Griffey Refractor for $22 total. Um, this is that Diamond DJ LeMahieu. There's the Beau Bichette that I've PSA 10, 426, had 205 in that Cody Bellinger sepia. Those two I still have. This Corey Seager I did sell. Like I said, I had 238 in it, and I sold it for, what I say, 400, 430, 429. And then after fees and everything, it ended up being like 360 after fees and shipping and all that stuff. So, a um, little bit of everything, but uh, really, really, especially as 2009 and 2010 Topps Chrome Griffey refractors, uh, I think those are sleepers because he went back to the Mariners for his last two years, and they're cheap. So this is last year, 2010, Mariners uniform, you know, they're cheap. Those are pretty good, I mean, they look to be pretty good condition. Um, and 20 bucks a piece, yeah, for a top chrome refractor from before 2000, you know, 2010, yeah, I'll pay that all day, um, all day. And then let's see here. If we go to, let's look those up. Actually, that'd be an interesting one to look at. Because Topps Chrome refractors were way, way uh, more rare. Um, even up until, I don't know, five years ago. I think 2015, 2016. 2016 is probably when they started to get a little more... Um, like they started producing a lot more. I've got my eye on a couple cards I want to show you all that I'm bidding on. So I guess I'll, I'll show you after the auction's over. Let's see here. 
<laughs> Regular Topps Chrome Griffey. So the refractor, there's ten, nine tens and fourteen nines. I mean, a lot of that is people just haven't been submitting these. I think these, well, they're definitely worth submitting at this point. Um, just see what if we can find some sold listings. Ooh, there's an Ichiro and Griffey Tops card. PSA 10, buy it now, 75 bucks. Ooh, I wonder if they had that in a Tops Chrome card. Ooh. Here's a purple. Has an hour left. 550. I need to get the rainbow on these because I'm pretty close. That one's got a bing corner. Looks like looks like it's got a bing corner. I don't know that that really. I don't know that I really care a whole lot. I'm more interested in that Ichiro Griffey card. If y'all don't know Ichiro. Griffey look was Ichiro was kind of like Griffey's little brother. I don't know when he came over, they had a really strong relationship. Even though, you know, they only played together for like really one season, they were really really close. When Ichiro first came to the United States, before he ever played baseball in the U.S., he met with Griffey. Hey, what's up, Malone? What's happening, Glaber Torres? Yes, sir. I wasn't actually looking up Glaber. I do think Glaber. I think any Yankees are a good are a good bet. But here's his tops Chrome. Glaber stuff's cheap. He's got the ability to turn it on too. You know he can put up some pretty pretty good home run numbers. I don't know. I think it's been overshadowed recently because of guys like Soto and Tatis and stuff like that. Joe, do you buy sealed wax and hold on to it? Mm, not really. Like, no. I'm not saying it's a bad investment. It's just one that is like, um, I I don't. I don't. Uh, it's a lot of cash to tie up. Sometimes you could see like pretty good increases in value in sealed wax in a short amount of time. Most of the time it's going to take longer. I mean, if I can find stuff at retail, then I might hold on to some of it, but I don't buy stuff secondary to hold it. No, because you know, I don't, I mean, it just, it takes a long time. You're, you're tying up a lot of money for an extended period of time. I just feel like I could be doing better with that money than, than holding wax. I, I guess I'm kind of old school. I kind of feel like everybody's going to wake up one of these days and they're going to realize that opening wax is kind of a bad investment. <laughs> It's just the the average return on investment for sealed wax. If you if you break it, if you open it, is just really low. But but no, I don't think I think it's a good idea. I mean i I haven't seen hardly anything in the last year that hasn't gone up in value when it comes to sealed wax. Definitely wish I'd have been. I just I don't I don't I don't know. I don't have it in me to to buy and hold sealed wax. It's not in. I don't find it interesting, I guess. There's a Griffey Orange. Man, I love these cards. Now it looks like I got ripped off. These are way cheaper. There's an X Fractor for 12 bucks. How am I... Oh, that's in January. But you don't see any PSA 10s. Because there aren't hardly any. They just haven't been submitted. 
There's the 2009 refractor. That one's cheap too. 2010X refractor. They're just cheap, in my opinion. See, like here, I think this was an 8. Oh no, that's a 9. So there's a 9 for 25 bucks. I just, when it comes to risk versus reward, ooh, somebody should have bought that. 97 Tops Chrome All Stars Gym Mint 10. That must have been a long time. That just ended? Ooh, that's cheap for that card. For 97? I mean, baseball, just like basketball, they started making tops chrome in 96. Those refractors, Griffey refractors, are expensive. Here's a 95. This is tops chrome, but I think it's out of regular tops packs. The Wrecking Crew refractor. I don't know exactly. I haven't got that far into it. I just know, I just feel like I really like the idea of Griffey tops chrome refractors long term. <laughs> Malone, I'm really liking 2020 sealed football because of all the quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's not a bad end, but I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, I think it's a good idea, really, from what we've seen. Like, I haven't seen hardly any sealed wax that's gone down in value in the last year. Um, and football just keeps seems to be picking up steam. Like, I don't. I think football is going to be stronger this year, this season, than it was last season. Um, yeah, I definitely don't think it's a bad investment. It's just not one that I'm, like, built for. Like, I just don't find it. Like, it's just not something I'm interested in. But that doesn't mean that you should not be. I think... Hmm. But no, I think sealed wax is a good investment. I want to look at this Ichiro Griffey card. There's some Ichiro Atani cards that I want too. See, there's that 2010 tops. I've probably got that card somewhere. Ooh, game used dual relic. Oh, that's 150 bucks. 2012. I wish they had this in a chrome and a refractor and an X fractor and stuff. But I really like that card. There's a tops now. Oh, I just want to throw this out there. Jason Stutzel Young Gun, Gun that is. Gun that is. Don't know what you're getting at there, buddy. Oh, I know you hit a Stutzel. Young Guns. Young Gun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's sick. Oh, they've come down that much? Oh, that's crazy. Jason hit a Stutzel Young Guns that was like $150, $200 a couple days ago, and now they're around $50 to $90. Yeah, that's crazy. All right. I need to hold on. Switch over here. I'm going to switch over. I keep my old uh, eBay account and because it has a lot more reviews and it gets a lot better placement whenever I list stuff on there. And that's what I used to list like all of my personal stuff that's not like card related. And I do list cards on there because it does get so much better. Um, 
views. So I'll show you some of the stuff I'm looking at on there. So this is 2016 Pops Chrome Sapphire. Dang it, I wasn't going to show you all this because I don't want anybody trying to try to outbid me. I really want this card. 2016 Topps Chrome Sapphire Refractor. That's not a refractor. It's just Topps Chrome Sapphire. Um, and here's a Bryce Harper. But these are both PSA 9s. I don't care. This is the first year of Sapphire. Um, it only came out in a complete set format. They only made 250 of them. And when they released them, they cost $1,500 a piece. So it's a first year Sapphire. They're awesome looking cards. This one doesn't look quite as good because it's got this shadow. But the whole card looks like that. Like, it's a sick looking card. I actually think these look better than Sapphire does now. Just They're like bigger flakes and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be bidding on that here in about 20 minutes. And this Harper, too. Like I said, they're both PSA 9s. And then here's an 09 Griffey X-Fractor. Um, and I do pay up for these, but most of the ones that I'm bidding on are pretty clean. Or at least they look clean. I don't have any reason like that corner might be a little off I'm not sure but I check them over really well before I before I really will bid on them so yeah I want that one too there's a bunch of cards on here like I don't come across cards that often that I'm like yes I want that card and I like like I I'll I'll be a little bit upset if I don't get it I don't come across, like, I'm stuff, I'm not like that. But these are so rare. And I just feel like on the Griffies, um, like, they're, they're not going to be this price for a lot longer. There just weren't a lot of them produced. Um, there's not a lot graded, but there just weren't many produced. I want to throw a question out there to everybody. Um, oh, Malone. I think grading, looking for vintage baseball cards for grading or vintage cards in general for grading, you could just make a bit, you could just honestly just make a living out of doing that. Like, if you can understand the vintage card market and you really, if you can just understand vintage grading, like become adept at all of the different grades, like what a one is, what a two is, what's the difference between a, an, uh, a VG3 and an EX4 and an EX Mint 5, like all or whatever, like all of the different grades. Like, like if you can tell the difference between a four and a four and a half grade, like you're going to do really well. But anyways, yeah, just vintage cards in general, like, you can make a profit on most of the stuff out there that, that you can buy raw in that, like, 1960 to 1975 time frame. There's a lot of stuff out there that you can just buy raw and feel pretty comfortable that if you get that card in the mail and it looks anything like it did in the photos... Yeah, you're going to spend your 20 bucks. Yeah, you're going to spend your $10 in shipping there and back to get it graded or whatever. I would use PSA if it was me. I mean, you could... Because you just might be dealing with tighter margins. It just depends on what... what, Like, how much you're buying those raw cards for. Um, but yeah, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity there. Like, you could just get on eBay every day and uh, buy cards and send them off to PSA and get them back, you know, like 10 months from now and make make money on them. They're not going going anywhere. Like, they're not going down in value for the most part. Um, they might not be going up real, real quick, but they're not going down. Um, shouldn't be. 
So, yeah, I think vintage baseball card grading or vintage sports card grading in general, yeah, it's really, I think it's just a really easy market, really. Um, you know, some people might argue that with me, but it just seems like the margins are there. Like, if you've got, I mean, it just it just does. Like, you can find a 6, a PSA 6, raw for 40 bucks and in a PSA 5 it's selling for 80 you know there's not much risk there <laughs> um so anyways 59 Frank Robinson in the condition looked really nice that's awesome um that's awesome I hope you do well on it but yeah I think there's a lot of opportunity there Okay, now, does is anyone on here watch Formula One racing? I have this on here. This is a magazine from 2006. It's got Lewis Hamilton on it. Um, Lewis Hamilton has broken like pretty much every record in Formula One. He just broke today, broke Michael Schumacher's most laps led in a career. Um... But I was watching Formula One, the series on Netflix, and I got invested in these guys. And then today, I watched my first actual Formula One race. And I will say, that is the most exciting, most compelling sport I have ever watched. And I do not say that lightly. I am, like, better than UFC, better than any other sport. Like, this is just a regular race. It's the first one I ever watched. It's not like, you know, I I didn't even know enough than I will. Like, I know a lot more now going into the next one I watched. It was so exciting. Like, there's, it's not like NASCAR. There's a lot of things that make it not like NASCAR. Like, I grew up around racing. Not around racing. Like, I didn't have family that raced. But I grew up around there's a racetrack right outside of town. I live in the middle of BFE. Like, <laughs> like I know about racing when it comes to like NASCAR and dirt track racing and carts and stuff like that. Formula, watching a Formula One race, I'm telling you, like, I feel like maybe it was just this first one, but I, now I think you have to be invested. You have to know the drivers and stuff. And so, like, watching that Netflix show definitely helped prepare me for that. But I feel like that's the, for just a regular show, like a regular race, like that was the most exciting sporting event I have ever watched. Get out of here, Jason. <laughs> F1 going to be super high end market. Today's race was pretty good compared to the other races. Yeah, it was a good race. But I just felt so invested in, like, okay. Like, yeah, there's, like, the battle between first and second. But also, like, Sergio Perez is starting in last. And he's up here. He's in, like, six. You see him coming up. He's in 14th, 13th, 11th. He gets up in, like, I think he might have finished sixth. Sixth or seventh. Um, I mean, I just, I just felt like there's so much, so many dynamic things happening and it's a short event, you know, it's an hour and a half, 56 laps. I mean, I, it could take longer than that, I'm sure. It would probably be done shorter than that. But, yeah, and today was probably a way, like, compared to other races. It was so much fun. I was sitting here by myself. Like, I had, I had looked it up, like, 10 a.m., my time. It's when the Formula One race starts. So I sat down, started watching it. And I was like, there was some stuff, I was wanting to look up, like, Formula One stuff on eBay, but I couldn't. I was like, no, I don't want to, like, I want to watch. Like, I want, I'm into it. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm in it to win it. But I did want Max Verstappen to win. I'm always rooting for the underdog. So I, I did want him to win. I felt like he should have won because he was ahead. And I think that whole, like, going outside, like, he went outside of the racetrack area to pass, basically. And there's a rule that says you can't do that. 
basically, I think is the way that goes. And that's dumb. And Max Verstappen should have won. And I thought he would. He had better tires. He was. He, he should have won. But I'm not going to get too deep into it. But anyways, here's a 2006 Autosport magazine um, with Lewis Hamilton. Get ready for Lewis Hamilton. I found that really interesting. Of course, it's not like in an awesome condition or anything, but... I can't imagine there's just a whole lot of these left in the world. Like, Lewis Hamilton Autosport magazines? I think there's a bunch of these? I don't think there is. I think they're probably pretty rare. Not that they're that collectible. Magazines aren't have never really been that collectible. But I think it makes an awesome wall hanger, like I said. You can uh, put it in a frame and hang it up. Whatever. Pretty cool. So, I have been looking, his, his cards, Lewis Hamilton's cards, there's this, his first Tops Now card, it's out of like 1900, um, it's like crazy, trading cards I think they're like seventy five hundred with fifteen watchers this is his like first tops card tops now he had some sports illustrated for kids stuff and he has some other Tops Now cards that are less, like, cheaper. But, um, let's see. Proof is in the pudding. Like, what have they actually sold for? Here's a 2008 NASCAR Racing Lewis Hamilton. This is one that's interesting to me. This is earlier. It's an earlier card. So now this one went for 400 on March 15th. And it's a PGI 10. And this is this is the same card as a PSA 10 is 4 grand. I mean that makes sense. Basically what they're saying is this they're paying the same amount for this card raw. They're paying for this as like a raw card basically. I think that's pretty good though. Um, somebody paid, f well, that's a best offer. We don't know what that went for. That eats your own Bryce Harper ending in like five minutes. I'm going to get on them, but, but yeah, F1 is definitely something to watch. I think, especially Lewis Hamilton. He has like, every record now like pretty much like all the main records snooze what are you talking about jason sour you you need to watch one you need to watch one on star stock let me show you something here I've mainly been looking for stuff. Let's see, collection. I've had some cards pulled already. They've pulled some cards out of my collection. I had a Pete Alonzo refractor. I had three Cam Newton Tops Chrome Starstock A's and a DJ LeMahieu A that they pulled out to send a PSA. And then I bought these two Bam at a Bios shocks these in a psa 9 are going for like 80 or 90 bucks in a 9 and i was able to get them i think i paid let me see yeah i paid 35 for one and 40 for another 
So, you know, I want the cards. I'm a big believer in Bam. I think Bam is going to do, he's going to be, barring injury, um, I see him being a perennial all-star or better within the next couple of years. Uh, but that's just me. Richard Perez, NASCAR 2. Mm, no, I'm not really a NASCAR fan. Oh, I don't know about the cards. Like, yeah, I think there's definitely room in the cards. NASCAR is one of the biggest sports in the United States, really. Like, it has a ton of, of fan appeal. I seen a Don Donner's Optic NASCAR box and never bought it at Walmart. Got me second guessing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, traditionally, NASCAR fans haven't been sports card fans necessarily. Um, but that could change, and I see a lot of people that have, like, shop. Um, card Collector 2, he's been picking up a lot of NASCAR stuff for his shop. Um, and and it's just, yeah. What the heck? Oh, never mind. Sorry, I was looking at my streaming setup for a minute. Um, but yeah, I've seen a lot of people buying up uh, uh, NASCAR stuff. And I think there's something there. It's kind of like, it just, you know, where are people at in this market? Like, normally that's the type of stuff that if the market takes a downturn, that stuff's going to take a downturn quick. Quicker than than the rest necessarily like um just because it's more fringe on in in the sports card hobby it's more fringe um that's just kind of the way it goes but i definitely but it also if if the hobby keeps going well it also could be a great investment right now because you know the prices go up faster when it's on the way up, if there's already attention on it and the market's still growing, Jason, you're saying you're that Target only allows purchases, retail purchases on Fridays? Huh. I haven't seen that anywhere, but I haven't been looking for retail for. I mean, I don't remember the last time I I went looking. I'm planning on making a video where, like, I just go spend a whole day, like, traveling around, going to Walmarts and Targets, see if I find anything, um, just to have something to make a video about. It'd be an easy video to make. It'd be fun, and just see if we can find anything. Talk to the customer service people. Anu Patel. Glad to have you here. Oh, it was all over Twitter. Interesting. But yeah, these BAMs are going for, I think, 200, 240 in a PSA 10, something like that, and 80 or 90 in a PSA 9. And so I figured 35, 40 bucks for a star stock A, if I can submit them for $30. I already saw, sent the submission form in to try to get these with the April submission as well. Um, we'll see if they'll let me do that or not. I still have an offer out there for $35 for one card. I don't know if they'll, if they'll come down on it, I'll buy it for sure. That's actually cheap. A blue velocity for 65 bucks for a PSA 9. That's kind of cheap. How much do eBay PSA 9 blue bl oh, Crap. Oh, crap. I thought I missed it. I got all wrapped up in my stuff. Friday at 8 a.m. Oh, yeah. They'll have big lines. I want this card. How much do I want it? That's the question. It's 
Yeah, I would be willing if I if I didn't have anything else going on, I would be willing to go to Walmart on a specific day at a specific time and wait for a couple hours to get some retail. Like if I didn't have anything going on, heck yeah. I mean, especially as a YouTuber, like that's easy content. Like find some whatever, like some new product. Um that's really good, easy content, just doing a product review. Like, I'm not paying resale prices, though. Not right now. I don't have the money for it. Flippers are out at 4 a.m. and chairs waiting. I bet. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not waiting for f six hours. No. Like, that. then it gets to the point to where, like, if I'm going to do that, then why wouldn't I just pay retail or pl pay resale prices? Like, honestly, if I'm going to wait out there for six hours... Will the prices of cards drop since places are opening up again? Maybe. I mean, it doesn't look like it. A lot of stuff's been open. You know, a lot of people attributed the rise in sports cards to the pandemic. Like people being like on lockdown and no sports going on and no gambling on sports going on and all that. But sports cards had been taking a turn for the last four or five years. Um, and that just kind of lit the fire under everybody. I, I don't think it's like, it's not going to crash. Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to go down in the next year, at least. Now it might flatten out. The modern basketball market has pretty much flattened out. Um, I'll be interested to see what happens after the baseball season starts. I feel like there's a lot of people that came out of basketball and football that are that bought some baseball just to sell it before the season starts. And base the the thing that they didn't take into consideration is baseball is a much more mature market, um, and it doesn't work that way. Like you, there are way 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 more baseball collectors out there. Um, which offset a lot of flipping activity. So, you know, if that, if, if that was people's intentions, it's not going to work the same way it worked in ba basketball and football. I don't care. I'm buying this card. That should be enough to get it. Holy crap. Nope. Dang. That was a PSA 9. Huh. One of y'all over there trying to outbid me on this. I don't care. The last one went for $45. That one went for 60 Wow. Uh, yeah, that was pretty much all I wanted to get into today. Dang. That was rough. I didn't think... I didn't think it'd come anywhere near that. Oh well. Um, so anyways, yeah. Now, Star, star Stock <laughs> Sniper Bots. Oh yeah, everybody's got a sniper. eBay doesn't make it, like it's within eBay's terms of service, like you can use snipers. I don't. I just think it's like, I don't want to be that guy. Like, it's like owning a robe. Like, then you gotta, you gotta own a pipe and, like, being... <laughs> I paid up for it. The last one went for $45. I was willing... I think there's some PSA 10s on there. Um, I was willing to pay, you know, 55 the last one went for 45 and I think that included shipping. 
<laughs> I know it wasn't you all. What players are overpriced? I don't I don't know. Yeah, baseball is a much more mature market. So right now you're seeing a dip because people are selling off before the season starts, but you're not seeing like some crazy crash. But um yeah, I expect a lot of those people that don't intend on being in baseball cards, they just thought it would be easy to come in. And they there probably are a lot of people that did that that did make money just to come in, you know, a couple months before the season starts, buy some stuff, sell it before the season starts, like right before the season starts and make some money. But if you were buying Tatis or Juan Soto six weeks ago, I don't know that you've necessarily made anything. Um, I don't think those guys' cards have necessarily gone up that much in the last six weeks. Um, who's overvalued? Joe Burrow? <laughs> Guy got his knee almost ripped off of his body. <laughs> And his cards, they they never have gone down. They really, I think they're more than they were during the season, like before it happened. No, I don't know. He was doing amazing, so I'm glad people are big on him. Are you on our baseball cards Reddit? Mm, no, I'm not. I do have a Discord though, Joe. It's up here. Card Collects Community Discord. Pinned in the comments, but no, I I've spent some time in the base in the sports cards reddits, but um, yeah, I don't I don't spend much time there. Um, I think I'm gonna take a short break and then I'm gonna get into C O M C. And so take about a five minute break while I'm breaking. I'm going to play an ad because I think if I don't play it, YouTube will automatically play one. I don't know. But anyways, I will be back in five minutes or so.
All right. The trout. That 2016 trout sapphire. That is one I was going to show you. It's crazy, but it's really cool. Get all my get all my boxes moved around here. So actually it's not that bad. So the a raw one here sold for two hundred. Again, it's first year sapphire. And then here's the Carlos Perez Mike Trout for what that's worth. Um, PSA 10 sold for three grand. These should grade pretty well. Here's a PSA 10 sold for two grand. That was on February 12th. I mean, Sapphire's huge. I think uh, that's actually pretty good. 16 bucks. Oh, that's an active leader. That's not the base card for Chrome Sapphire Trout. I think any of these, like parallels, refractors, even from recent years, are pretty good buys right now. When you look at the other markets like football and basketball, and again, baseball is very different than uh, football and basketball. But when you look at those markets, like, if this was a LeBron, all right, like LeBron out of a thousand, you know, that card would be a hundred, two hundred dollars raw, probably. If it was a parallel LeBron, I don't know how many Sapphire they made this year. A lot more than 250 that they made in 2016, but, um,. But I think there will be some carryover. Okay, so like here's one for five grand. A lot of these people just watch to see if it actually sells or what it sells for, when it sells. But there really aren't any on here for, there aren't any on here available for less than five grand. There aren't any raw available. Here's a gold. So they did have uh, like one of ones and one of fives inserted into these sets there were like super fractors and golds so this one is the one of five it's the home run leaders so it's got chris davis nelson cruz and mike trout and this guy's got 30 grand on it i think that's a little bit ridiculous but um there were some parallels of that i'm surprised like, it looks like the Chrome Refractor is going for more than the Sapphire in this base card. That's a little bit surprising to me. Hmm. Um. You get back to my watch list because. Oh, crap! Oh no, it hasn't it hasn't ended yet. Hold on. Six minutes on this Griffey X Fractor. Um need to keep an eye on that. So here's the purchase history for this account. Bought a 2015 Chrome Update Each Year Old Gold Sparkle out of 250 for $16 shipped. So I just think this is a really cool card. It's raw. I don't know what the condition's like exactly, but it's a cool, cool looking card. I like the Sparkle. They don't sell as well. 
I mean, it's out of 250, so it should do well. But it's Marlins, but I just really like it. And like you all know, I pretty much each row, I PC each row. Um, here's three Teoscar Ta Hernandez cards that I bought. Um, some of us had been talking about Teoscar Hernandez in uh, the live streams here recently. So I bought two base autos and a refractor auto for 80 bucks, which is pretty much in line. I mean, I actually probably paid up a little bit. I mean, retail, like going price would be like 20 a piece. I basically paid 20 a piece for the regular autos and 40 for the refractor auto, which is full price. Like I paid full price for them. But when you look at what Tasker Hernandez did last year and where the Blue Jays are at with their team this year, the type of attention that they're going to be getting, um, that's, that's, a, that's a risk I'm willing to take. Oh, crap. Sorry, guys. Wish <laughs> that is so... Oh, crap so weird all right how did i not notice that anyways um thanks for letting me know facts i feel like such a dummy right now hey what's good rage i've just been sitting here showing everybody uh going through my ebay listings with my full screen webcam on where nobody could see anything for about five minutes <laughs> So yeah, I bought this uh, Ichiro Gold Sparkle for about 16 bucks. 2015 Gold Sparkle out of 250. Um, three Tasker Hernandez 2017 Topps Chrome Rookie Autos. And this one's a refractor. Again, those were 80. I bought two Brady Singer First Bowman Chrome Refractors. He's a Royal. Um, paid five bucks a piece for those this is all one lot that was like 30 bucks wander franco mojo refractor just not the first bowman but uh kind of the the non rc logo non first bowman um mega box mojo refractor it was 550 bought another couple brady singer sterling refractors for like a dollar a piece Julio Rodriguez, Mojo Refractor, he's a big prospect. Uh, again, not the rookie card, not the first Bowman. Six bucks. Ryan Mountcastle. I bought his. This is not this is a refractor, but this is not his first Bowman. And it's not his RC rookie card refractor. It was three dollars though. Just kind of making some cheap plays on some of these prospects. Then I bought four Garrett Cole First Bowman Paper rookies, 2012 rookies for 325, about a dollar a piece. I figured I couldn't go wrong there. So like this is just basically this guy does auctions on a regular basis and just has a ton of cards in them. Like if we go to his if I go to his auction right now. There'll be a ton of stuff in there. Hold on a second, though. Let's see where my let's see where my Griffey's at. Two minutes. Two minutes. I am watching these Barry Bonds PSA 9 Tops Tiffany's. Two of them are ending in a day. They've been going for about 300 bucks. Like I said, the PSA 10s are going for about three grand. And I just don't see it. Like, this seems really cheap to me, these PSA 9s. For 300 bucks, um, I don't know that I've got an extra 300 bucks I want to drop right now. But if I did, I would, I would definitely, definitely consider picking one of these up those are cheap considering the psa 10 is going for three grand and there will be more hype around barry bonds 
when he gets uh, closer to closer to the Hall of Fame voting. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, man. Um, I think the Topps Chrome Refractors, the Topps Chrome Sapphire. I just think Topps, I just really like Topps Chrome in general for baseball as a play right now. I just feel like it's, it's just overlooked. I think, uh, you know, you are going to have people coming over from the basketball market. You are going to have people coming over from the football market. And there is going to be carryover there. And you have a lot of young people coming in. You know, so what was the basis of thinking for the baseball card market two years ago isn't the same as it is today. And next year it won't be the same as it is right now. You know, things change. Um, a lot of things stay the same. I'm glad that there's a lot large collector base in the baseball market. Um, definitely helps with the uh, stability and things. But, um, oh, the dibble dabble. Yeah, yeah. I like to, yeah, I don't know. I don't consider myself, Rage said six bucks is a steal on Julio and the type of moves that I call a dibble dabble, like that Julio and the Ryan Mountcastle and the Brady Singer first bowmans. Exactly, and the Wander Franco mojo. It's just I don't I don't by any means I don't consider myself a an expert on prospects. And normally I will refer people to like Rye Dog fifty four to Ryan. He makes a lot of videos about minor leagues and prospects and he seems to know a lot about it. I do not, and I don't want to. It's not. It's not. It's not an area of expertise that that I'm interested in getting into. I just don't feel comfortable trying to judge a prospect. But there are a lot of things that go into it from an investing standpoint, especially, you know, because you know a lot of these guys before they hit the majors are just so cheap. But then again, like if you look at the 2016 class of rookies just five years ago, you'd be hard pressed to find one whose name you recognize of guys that were playing in the majors five years ago. You know, there's probably 40 or 50 guys from that rookie class that you've never heard of. Most of them aren't still are aren't in the aren't in the game anymore. Yeah, Rage, exactly. The Topps Tiffany from back then, that's like... So the 86 Topps Tiffany traded and the 87 Topps Tiffany, Barry Bonds, those are like his two premier rookie cards, right? I mean, there's the Fleer update, but really the Topps Tiffany, I would say, is like... If you want the Barry Bonds rookie card... Then you either want the '86 tops traded or the '87, the '86 tops traded Tiffany or the '87 tops Tiffany. Like those are the two, like you say, premier top tier cards. And being that the the PSA 10 is going for three grand, you know, there's not that big a difference. They're very low pop, anyways. But if we go over and we look at 1987 tops. Tiffany. If we look at the population on these, 241 tens and 1174 nines. So there is a lot more nines than there are tens, but there's still only 1400 cards in either a nine or a 10. I think there was only 3,500 of these sets made total. Maybe a little more than that. It's showing that PSA is graded 3,000. But for Barry Bonds, they've probably graded dang near every card that's out there. I know there still are some unopened sets, but probably not a whole lot anymore. Probably not near as many unopened as there was three years ago. Um, but yeah, there's you know four times as many nines as there are tens. But the nines are going for a lot less. Ooh, crap. I missed it. I missed it. I, oh, dang it. I got to talking and I missed it and it went cheap. Dang it. Well, I'm dumb. That's why I sit there and I'll sit there and watch the countdown because I know my train of thought will get off 
and then I'll miss it. I've done that so many times. And it seems like every time I do that, like, it goes cheap. And every time I actually, like, almost every time that I actually stick around and I'm in it, like, it goes expensive and I get outbid. Dang it. Oh, well. Um, what Wednesday is something you would never buy? Are the things to buy a hundred? Huh. Oh yeah, the Opeachy Tiffany. I forgot about that. I haven't. I haven't even seen those actually. Is that a thing? Opeachy Tiffany? Whoa. Opeachy Barry Bonds. PSA 10. Yeah, the Opeachies are so hard to get a grade on. The quality just, what? even though the quality of 1987 tops wasn't great. The quality of Opeachy sure wasn't great. 50 grand? Are you kidding? No way. I mean, I guess. 50 grand. Wow. How is this a possible PSA 10? That's what's in the description of this. Look at this card. Possible PSA 10. That's a possible huge lie. Like that is not even close. Not even anywhere close to a PSA 10. It's probably a PSA 6. Probably an 8 OC. It's dumb. Anyways. <laughs> live stream and ebay bidding do not miss mix i know i know i knew that was i like i had these coming up and i'm like oh, i know i'm gonna miss them i even set like reminders on my phone of like like uh don't forget there'll be others though there'll be others out there but yeah, those uh, Griffey Tops Chrome, definitely, I definitely think those are a good buy. Opeachy Chipper Jones. Yeah. Crazy thing is, um, like, I wonder, you, five years ago, you probably could have bought Oh, Peachy Berry Bonds is for cheap. Like, it looks like the boxes are still cheap, but they're just, like, so hard to grade. Or at least they were. It's a sealed box. For $300. But it's a 792 card set, too. So you're not even guaranteed to get one Berry Bonds. I don't think these are series out of a uh, out of a box probably wouldn't honestly well I mean you're not guaranteed to now they cannot put question marks in listings so now they put possible PSA 10 oh geez That's crazy. Like, who wants to be that person? Um, let's see here. 
I am going to switch over and log out and log back in to the card collects side. We still haven't looked at COMC. All that stuff. Basically, for seeing anything that I have that's not going to grading, that's not going to um, star stock, that doesn't qualify for star stock, goes to COMC. So, let me look at my inventory. So, I've been buying a lot of basketball on COMC. Keldon Johnson, first year select, rookie select. Uh, Brandon Ingram, select premieres. I've got three or four of those now. Um, at about 20 bucks a piece. This is inventory. This is not stuff that I've sold. So I've got, I've got an Ichiro Bowman Gold 2004 for sale here. I've got some DeAndre Hunter for sale that I just bought cheap. Manny, Steven Strasburg rookie. There's another Ichiro. I kind of wish I wouldn't have sent that in, but I did, so whatever. Corey Seager, gold base. Corey Seager, stat lines. This is all stuff that I can't grade and that that I can't send to COMC. So there's a Bryce Harper batting all-star rookie that, you know, three, four bucks is all I'm going to get for that. Now that card in a PSA 10 is worth a hundred bucks, but that was not a PSA 10 version of that card. There's a Bowman Platinum Harper. John Cruck tops traded 49 cents. Nobody's got any love for John Cruck anymore, and they never will. <laughs> but, you know, I'll, I'll always remember you, John Cruck. There's a uh, Chrome Sepia Pete Alonzo cup card. But I'm basically selling all my, like, random stuff, and then I'm buying, like, Darius Garland, Premier Select, a lot of Select, Colin Sexton, Shock Prism, Optic Shock. There's some Colin Se Sexton Base Optic. Uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker, Red, White, and Blues. Nikhil Alexander Walker Green. Some of these I have listed for sale. Some of them I don't. <clears throat> and I'm planning on having those shipped back to me. Got some Taco Fall stuff. Some of this stuff I'm losing money on. Like, it's Taco Fall. I'm like, uh, these are really cheap. Like, if he gets any playing time at all, like I'll I'll make a little bit of money off Taco Fall. He has got no playing time. He's got no like zero, almost zero playing time. Yeah, Cruck with a whole ten a dip in every picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll remember you, John Cruck. Gotta get on COMC. <laughs> COMC is a great place to send stuff. Um, you know, anything that's worth basically a dollar or more, you just ship it to them in a penny sleeve. They take a scan of it, um, list it. All you got to do is set the price on it. They charge you like 25 cents or 50 cents per card to list it and scan it. And then 5% on sales. And... Uh, and then when you cash out, it's like 10% on cash out. So star stock is better if you have cards that qualify for star stock because there's no, they don't charge you anything to list stuff. 
you just send it to them and they'll they'll grade it and they'll put it in the system and uh they do charge three percent on deposits but that's waived right now and it's been waived that three percent fee on deposits has been waived for a while um more darius garland deandre hunter more Keldon Johnson, select base, concourse. More Brandon Ingram, premier select rookies. And finish it up with a 1996 Bowman's best Derek Jeter. Um, but yeah, Starstock right now charges nothing to get it in the system. They charge 5% on sales. And then right now you can either take the 2.9% PayPal fee or uh, they'll mail you a check for free, like no fees attached or whatever on withdrawals. Um, but they're trying to get like a direct deposit up and going for Starstock. If you're if you don't have a Starstock account yet and you're interested, use code Card Collects at sign up. And if you deposit, if you make a deposit of ten dollars or more, then you'll get ten dollars for free. And so will I. Da 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 da. The more you know. <laughs> but no, I do think it's a good outlet. Fifty thousand cards, yeah. You should see my basement, dude. But all that down there, like you probably got a lot. Fifty thousand decent cards. Like I've got a basement full of just commons and sets, like. I need, honestly need to take a bunch of it and just take it to Goodwill. Because I don't know, like a lot of times you can find somebody, there's people that'll buy co like just commons, junk commons for for like a dollar for a thousand, you know. And you, you know, I've got maybe, you know, maybe you get 50, for like a bunch of junk commons, you could get $50 for 50,000 or something like that. But I, I don't even know anybody around here that'll do that. 90s inserts in great shape. Stars in the Hall of Fame always will be the God tier moves. I'm on Starstock. Cool. That's cool. You should be on Starstock, I think. It's a good it's a good deal. And then with their PSA um submissions too. Man, that's just it's a really good deal. And it's they have changed the way that they word their uh, their PSA stuff. Like now it says, like, so it's still thirty bucks, which is still cheap. Their January submission was back in two months. They have a special deal with PSA. They're supposed to only send cards that they think will get a nine or a ten. Um. So their last submission was back in two months. Uh, April 2nd is the deadline for April submission. Um, they used to say that we, uh, like we are supposed to get them back in two months or something like that. But now it says... We are unable to make any guarantees around PSA turnaround times. Please refer to the complete through dates published on the PSA website to get an estimate. The problem is they don't tell you what grading level you're, you're submitting at. So like they say, look at PSA's, um, complete through dates, but PSA's complete through dates are based on certain levels. Let's see. Let's see if they say anything in here anymore. They've changed the way a lot of this is worded. I mean, it's still good for 30 bucks and they should get back. I mean, if they got their January submission back in two months, they should get they they should be getting your submissions back quicker than if you uh, went to PSA yourself with like an economy submission. But right now the complete through dates they've actually done really well 
like their regular service, like their what used to be their fifty dollars service, that used to take. I feel like it used to take a lot longer time. Um, but it's a it's complete through January nineteenth. Uh, Express is complete through January thirty first, which was. Yeah, I mean, two months ago, basically, eight weeks ago. But regulars complete through 10 weeks ago. And economy is complete through September 1st. That has, I feel like that's made, no, maybe not. Economy. Yeah, you can't even get economy anymore. You haven't been able to get economy for months. So value, modern, not ultra modern, but value modern is still on July 20th. So January 20th would have been six months. So yeah, that's eight months ago. And that doesn't count how long it takes them to get you into the system. This date is when you were entered into the system. It might take two or three months from the time you ship them your cards to the time you actually get entered into the system. So it's, yeah, they're still a year out on their $20 value. So Starstock must be saying that they're getting regular service for that $30. Basically, because that would be 10 weeks ago. And they're saying they got their first one back in two months. And they have said, like, they have some type of deal where, with PSA, where, like, they're, because they pre-screen everything, they pre-grade everything, and they've made some kind of deal with PSA. Now, I'm shooting off the hip here, but I know I have read this or gotten an email about this from them like this is not just me making stuff up here like they said like we have to send them like psa 9 we have to send them what we think will be psa 9s or 10s basically so they'll take star stock a's out of your account and put them back in there if they don't think they'll get a 9 or a 10 that's pretty much the deal <clears throat> we'll see what happens, but if they can get these back, these submissions back in two or three months, like this is a gold mine. It really is. Like you just go on here and buy cards, star stock A's that, you know, they're going to screen them and only submit stuff that they think will get a nine or a 10. Dude, there's a ton of money makers on here right now, if that's the case. Yeah. Yeah, Rage is saying I'm buying a bunch of Star Stock Bs and sending them home and getting triple on eBay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's, that's, yeah. That's what I was doing with this uh, Drew Brees. I need to buy more of them. So these Drew Brees Star Stock Bs. So I look at a Star Stock B as pretty much average of what you're going to buy on eBay most of the time. Well, on eBay, these Drew Brees Bowman rookies are going for like 80 bucks and, you know, $45. So I bought one and I need to buy the rest of them. Really? But the only thing is, I don't know how long, how long did it take them to get your cards back to you the last time you had them ship cards to you? I think it's taken a while, isn't it? Shipping is on a first come first serve basis. Please note the ship outs are currently experience a wait time of four to six weeks. Oh, that's not too bad. And they charge 50 cents a card up to a hundred cards, $5 flat fee, 50 cents a card over a hundred cards, $15 flat fee if ship priority. Yeah. So 125 cards would cost $77 and 50 cents. 
You know, it's 50 cents a card plus. So it's 50 cents a card up to 100 cards plus $5. So if you send 100 cards, it's $55. If you send uh, 125 cards, it's $77.50. Oh, it was months ago, the last time you had a shipment sent back to you, and it took two and a half weeks? Yeah. Actually, four to six weeks is not that bad. I need to buy these other Drew Brees rookies. And that's like, uh, hold on here. Like, there's just, there's a lot of deals on here. Like, this BGS 9.5 Cam Newton, Topps Chrome rookie, I bought for $50. Those are going for 80 or 90 bucks on eBay. And that's kind of, that's kind of what you're saying is like, it, there might not be as, like as much room as there was. There's still a lot of room though. And I mean, a lot of these like mosaic rookies, like if you want to go on there and pick up a bunch of star stock bees for like next to nothing and sell them on eBay, or whatever. Like there's just there's a lot of room there. Oh yeah, sending baseball out and football home. Yeah, I, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, because it's gonna be two and a half months, or it's gonna be no, it's gonna be six weeks. Yeah, I feel you there. There's a lot of juggling goes on. And like I use, I'm sure you do, like eBay, ComC, Starstock. Um, I use all these for different purposes. Like I have specific reasons why I use eBay, whether it's buying or selling. COMC, whether it's buying or selling. You know, um, Starstock. So it, there's a, there becomes a juggling act. It really does. And I still, whenever I get the chance, I like to buy anything I can in person at a shop or it shows, you know, you're going to get a lot better deals most of the time, you know, whether it's, and then you take that and you split it up, you know, so like the next show or the next shop I go to, like any time I see a first Bowman or I see a, any type of rookies that you know, qualify for star stock. Like I'm buying them. Cause I know, you know, if they're in good shape, I can send them in and a certain amount of them are going to get star stock A's and they're, I'm going to be able to sell them for a big premium on what I paid for them, you know, at that shop or at that show or whatever. Like that's easy money. Um, and for some of them, you know, if they get an A, then I can look at them and say, okay, do I want to spend another $30 and have star stock send these to PSA to get graded. Like it's just, it's weird. Like nowadays there's so many options that it, if you, if you sell out on it, like if you're willing to go full bore into it, like, like there's all these different tiers and, and ways of looking at the market to make money in these, you know, these different, so I can go to a show and I can say, you know, okay, you know, I can come out with cards and, <clears throat> and say, all right, well, I'm going to look through all of these. Um, if I can send them, am I, you know, I can send them to grading myself. I could send them to SGC, pay 25, 35 bucks and have them back in a couple months, six weeks to two months, whatever. I could send them a star stock if they're able to to do that if they're not going to get a star stock a or if they're not like if they're not worth sending in for grading basically then i can send them to comc and sell them on there it just opens up a lot of avenues oh you buy cards on mercari i've never looked on, i mean i have looked on there but it seems like you're wading through a lot of, like, just, like, 
common cards that people want a thousand dollars for. I don't, I've never found. I, I've looked at it. I never have really searched on there. Yeah, but I gotta. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah, buy the nine instead of the star stock A. I agree. I agree. A lot of these, though, you can't find a nine for them. But if I'm going to send something like those BAMs, for instance, all right? So, like the nines on these shocks, the nines are 80, 90 bucks. The Star Stock A's, 35. I bought one for 35 and one for 40. The tens are like 240, I think. So if I got two nines, I'm making a little, little, little bit of money. If I get one ten, then I'm making a pretty good chunk of change. The ten rate is no easier than anywhere else. I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think their ten rate's pretty high. I don't know that for sure, but I... I somebody on here said that it was like like 50% tens. No, no. They said it was like I don't know. It was pretty high. Like between nines and tens it was like 90%. I think it was. I think it was like 50% tens, 42% nines. And there was a few eights and sevens maybe. You know, but like over 90% were either an eight or a nine. And I feel like that's, that's the information I've gotten from them is basically like that's, they have to send in, like that's their deal is like, yeah, you get better pricing and you get better return times, but you have to send in only like PSA nines and PSA tens as best you can, like as best you can. But I don't, I don't know. I haven't submitted with them. I don't know if they even uh, make their... I don't even know if they make their, like, gem rates. Um, uh, public. I know, like, a lot of the submitters that I do follow... Yeah. I'm cool with 48% tens. If I've got a if I send in two cards and I've got a 50/50 chance of getting a 10, I'm good with that. Like especially if a 9 makes money. If I can make money on a 9 and I and I've got a 50/50 shot at getting a 10, I'm good with that. Over the course of time, over 100 cards if 48 of those come back 10s, I'm making a a good deal of money that way. Like that's that's good business for me. And I think that's the main thing with why there's opportunities on Starstock is like how much do you trust their grading? Like how much do you know about grading and submissions and about gym rates and stuff like that to be able to figure what is a Starstock A actually worth? And I don't think a lot of people even know about these submissions. Like, they probably know that they are available, that they're willing to put in submissions, but that they're getting them back so quick and that they're 30 bucks. I mean, that's, that's cheap. I mean, they don't even make you pay shipping. Like, 30 bucks is what it would cost me. I mean, I have to send my cards to them. But if I'm just buying cards on there and then they're shipping them to that 30 bucks is included in them shipping the cards to PSA and they get the cards back. And then if I want them, you know, I'll have to pay for them to ship them back to me, but still. Gotcha. 
Got you. If you're if you can win on the nine, well, I I think that's a good policy. I don't want to make I don't want a policy where I'm gambling. I don't think sports cards is something that you. Well, I know for a fact it's not something you have to gamble on. If you're gambling on sports cards, you're choosing to do it because you don't have to. You can make money on sports cards without a whole lot of risk. You can control the risk quite a bit. Um, that it might be involved. There might be more to it than just, you know, buying a card or whatever. But yeah. <laughs> I definitely agree though like like you see some crazy stuff like when the Tatis the Tatis and the Jason Dominguez were taken off and back in January okay the base tap, tops Tatis was 40 bucks and the 9 was 80 bucks <laughs> and the Dominguez was the same way the Bowman Chrome first Bowman Dominguez was 40 bucks and the 9 was 70 75 80 dollars like why would i buy the card and try to get it graded when i could just buy the nine like that doesn't make any sense jason have a great day man i know you got to work tomorrow so i'll catch you later thanks for being here though yeah i believe it i believe it rage it's there it's there to do you know and just like that that video I made, like, you don't, you, you don't have to make a bunch of money on every card. You just have to have turnover. And that's the same way every sales outlet has operated and made money forever. Like, you take the inventory you have, you turn it over. The only difference between cards and, like, a retail, like a shoe store, is a shoe store has limited inventory space. Like, they have only so much display space and so much storage space. You know, so they can turn their inventory over three times in a year and they can make their 10, 20% profit three times in that year. But with cards, you know, and it's not like they can go from like just having fancier shoes and charging more money. That's not usually how it works. But with cards, you can do that. Like you're not normally limited by storage space. You can turn over that money, make your 20%, turn it over, you can buy a more valuable card to buy into a more valuable card to make that turnover on the next the next one. Just off knowing what to buy, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not always easy, but there are certain like just like that star stock play, like. Uh, A lot of sleepless nights. That video is what brought me to talk to you more because I see myself in you. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. I talked to, <clears throat> I don't know if you ever watched PSA Collector, but I talked to Matt from time to time and he kind of got me started with this channel. And that's what I said to him, basically, is like you... Like, when I started looking on YouTube at sports card stuff, because it took me a long time to actually, like, seek out. Like, I didn't even know there was anybody talking about sports cards on YouTube. And when I started looking, I'm like, man, there just isn't, there just isn't anything out here. Like, there's just a bunch of guys showing off Luka Doncic cards. Like, what is this? And then I saw, like, I stumbled upon Matt's stuff. And I was like, oh, here's a guy that looks at cards the same way I do. Or similar to how I do. Like, he's actually, you know, putting in some work here. Like, he has, you know, money. His money means something to him, you know. he He's not just out there, you know, just picking up cards just to have them. Like, trying to find deals and looking at, trying to estimate, you know, how much is are these population numbers worth versus this person's popularity versus you know what do i think the market trend is going to be what's going to happen in the future oh yeah 
Right on. Yeah, he's a, Matt's a really cool guy. <laughs> uh, Rage, you're too kind. You're flattering me. You're too kind. But I hope so. Um, because <clears throat> I hope, like right now, like I feel very confident about where I have my cards right now. But I've got a lot of money tied up. Not a lot of money necessarily. But potentially a lot of money tied up. Like I'm waiting to get submissions back. I'm waiting for cards to get entered into the system. I'm doing all this waiting on what should be a pretty good amount of money. But right now it has not gone through yet. And so... Um, not that I'm really nervous or anything like that. It just hamstrings me. Like I'm not able to, to, to do a whole lot at this point in time until I get some submissions back and I'm able to sell some stuff. Yeah. I haven't, I tell you what, Starstock, basketball on Starstock has died. Like, it doesn't seem like, it, like two months ago, three months ago, at the beginning of the season, a lot of people were on Starstock flipping basketball. Or, not on Starstock, on ComC, on ComC, on COMC, a lot of people on here flipping basketball. And I get, I don't know if they all moved over to Starstock, but it seems like it just died. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Hold all the vintage stuff. That's what I do. I try to flip all the modern stuff. I don't like holding it. It's a hot potato. And just hold all the Hall of Famers and vintage. And, and at the very least, future Hall of Famers. Like my Ichiro stuff. I will sell some of it, but if I get a 10, I'll definitely be holding at least one 10. Whatever the highest grade I get in an Ichiro rookie out of my Ichiros, I'll for sure be holding one of them. Yeah, I got you. I know what you mean. There's more money in selling 40 cards raw than waiting a year to get uh, get your submission back. For sure. So, I don't know. I think that's pretty much it for what I've got going on right now. I think we've covered a lot of stuff. Thanks, Rage. You've, you've brought up some good, some good points towards the end of the stream here that we're able to talk about. I do try to tell people about, you know, I get so many questions that are kind of based like, um, you can kind of tell, like, the point is, like, like if it's not if like raw cards aren't worth anything basically or like if it's not a PSA 10 it's not worth anything and there were like a question like is a PSA 9 worth buying or is a PSA 8 worth buying and it's like you can make a lot of times especially if you're buying cards in like that buy it seems to me like I don't know, let me know what you think but it seems to me if you're buying cards in like that 5 to 10 dollar range raw and that player gets attention. Like, I'm thinking about, like, a few months back when I was buying Ray Allens and Allen Iverson base tops 96s. And that player gets attention. Um, 
those cards can go up more than the PSA 10s and the PSA 9s as far as uh, percentage-wise. Like, you might see a $5 card going for $20 or $30, you know, a 400 or 600% return. Whereas the PSA 10 might go from $300 up to 1000 Like, maybe you see a 300% return on the PSA 10. You see a 500 600 on the Raw. Ziggy! You have, have a lot going on. Oh, Joe Coke, do you have an e, e Tops Ichiro? Mm, no. I don't. I know which card you're talking about. The E Tops Rookie? I know which card you're talking about, I think. But no, I, I don't think I have one. Who was I talking to today in chat that was like, oh, it was on the PSA 9 video. His name was John. Can't remember his last name, but he said something along the lines of, I, I can buy a PSA 7. For my collection, I can buy a PSA 7 and put it in a corner, and I can't tell the difference between it and a PSA 10. And I said, yeah, that, I think that gives me a leg up in this game. Is that most of the stuff that has actual value to me doesn't have a whole lot of monetary value. So it allows me to be a lot more unbiased whenever I'm looking at the numbers on, you know, how much is this selling for? How much is it actually worth? And being able to sell stuff, to let go of stuff and not hold on to it necessarily. Like it's just a vehicle for creating creating money to either help in my collection or whatever, help pay the bills, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, Ziggy's a smart guy. Well, that's about all I got for this stream, I think. I want to thank you all for being here. Thanks for uh, for hanging out with me. Um, and Rage, I'll check out your Jordan video. Sorry, I had it hides it like certain things comments it hides so i'll check that out but i want to thank you all for being here i really appreciate it um i don't know how much i'll be posting for the next week i'm trying to put something together for like maybe tuesday or thursday um just so i got something going out this week but being it's easter weekend because i think in this weekend easter weekend well whether it is or not i'm going to visit family this weekend and so there'll be several days I won't be able to, to do anything with the channel. So hopefully I'll be able to get something out. But uh, no, really appreciate y'all being here. And I will catch you all later. Definitely, if you haven't, definitely, this may be last chance, but definitely check out the Discord, get in there, hang out. And uh, that's, where, that's where everybody talks about this stuff outside of these live chats for right now anyways. All right. Y'all have a good night. Thanks a lot.